They were the best of naval aviation, top gun graduates, commanders of the Navy's weapons testing base at China Lake, California. Now their families are asking, why did so many pilots have cancer? By the time they diagnosed him, he was stage four, and um, he was dead in seven months. Soon after he died, um, I found out some other of our friends had passed away. And it made me freeze in my tracks because he had been um, commanding officer of Naval Air Weapons Station out west. Um, and out of seven consecutive commanding officers, uh, four in a span of three years had passed away from cancers. Aviators and their families do not think it's the base, rather that those deaths may be one sign of an increase in cancers across military aviation. What got me started was um, when I got sick seven and a half years ago now, um, I started thinking back about all the friends of mine that I'd seen that had gotten sick, that had had cancer and died. And the number kept popping in my head about you know, this guy, you know, my career path was similar to his. Uh, these other guys who were F-14 guys or F-4 guys, a couple of A-6 guys, EA-6B guys that I knew that uh, had, can you know, had had cancer and stuff like that. And the names just kept popping up. The guys that I saw that had cancer, they got the cancer within the 15 to 20, 23 year mark after they completed their flying careers. They didn't have cancer while they flew. They didn't have cancer initially while they were there, but most of them, after the completion of their last, you know, tack year sortie, which was usually around, for squadron COs, was around your 18, 19 year mark in the Navy. Hill has built a database of all squadron commanders of Navy carrier aircraft from 1985 to 2001. Hill has found that those commanders were three times more likely to develop cancer than their civilian counterparts. He has provided his research to the Navy in hopes that it will spur the Navy to research the cancers further. Uh, then the F-16, the F-18, all those series of aircraft, and all the way back to the F-4 and F-9s and those things that were used back in the Vietnam era and, and really forward to today, all carry extremely powerful radar systems. Some aviation veterans groups have begun to question whether radiation from the radars may be a link. You know, when we all go to get x-rays, you see everybody wearing lead vests and, and lead rooms and lead panels. Well, that doesn't exist in an airplane. The VA, you know, can do this. They can actually pay attention and they can make a difference if they want to. So that, that's really our message to the VA is that if they want to do this, they can do it. Both Air Force and Naval Aviation Veterans Groups are pressing the VA to look more closely at these rates. <laughs> 